Here we go, She-Man and the Mistresses of the Universe has returned with its part two of the series and you would never know if it wasn't for YouTubers like me who are single-handedly keeping this absolute abomination alive and all I have to say is wow, good lord, Evil Lynn or Hevelin takes Abby Zilla from The Last of Us behind the barn and makes a proper woman out of her. Okay, now look, the Kim Kardashian of indie filmmaking is back. Let's give him a round of applause. Okay, Kevin Smith, we get it. You have a fetish for androgynous muscle dudes who cosplay as super-powered drag queens. It's okay, Kevin, it's fine. Just stop crying. You know, that actually makes me think for a second. If Kevin Smith did Star Wars episodes 4 through 6, it probably would have been about Luke going to Dagobah from the very beginning and staying there all the way to the end. While a very muscular Leia Organa with a pump and a half-shaven head screaming I have the power while simultaneously suffocating Darth Vader and Palpatine with her biceps. That would make Kevin Smith's wet dream 1000% I'd bet his life on it. Anyway listen this story comes off like it was written by a preteen going through puberty. But then again unlikable people create unlikable characters that is all there is to it. That is why Silent Bob was such a good character because it forced Kevin Smith to shut the f*** up. Oh, look I know that all of your creative talent was located in your gut and too bad that's gone now but that's made your estrogen go through the roof because now all you do is cry and lie. The memoir for you should be titled How to Ruin a Career and crying all the time. See Kevin and the showrunners dug a grave by not only lying but treating the fans like dirt, literally admitting that their voice means nothing and making an all round terrible first couple of episodes. I hate to be the one to break it to you but there's no way that that corpse can climb out for the second half. This this show is such a dumpster fire I don't even know where to start. I can't even begin to describe my problems with this series beyond the obvious. The impression that I had at first was that this series would be more kin to what Transformers Prime was for its own franchise, bringing back an 80s classic with more coherent stories and more mature themes while also giving us superb animation and great voice casting. But we got the literal f opposite with this Masters of the Universe Netflix adaptation. I think fans nowadays are getting fatigued by idiots getting a hold of a franchise, warping the old characters with the logic that it'll elevate the new characters. That has repeatedly not worked out so well and Mark Hamill's presence in Mistresses of the Cuckverse should have been a big reminder of that. When you pull a Last Jedi type maneuver, the people aren't gonna believe your bullshit anymore. I think Kevin is gonna have a real interesting time if he ever goes to a convention and his fellow nerds get a hold of him. Look, I gave up on this scumbag when he started apologizing for making Chasing Amy. Look, maybe Kevin is still mad that out of his two old friends, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, he's the only one out of the three that didn't make it in Hollywood and get big. Remember when the producers of the Sonic movie respected the fans and did not point fingers. How well did that go? Well good enough for a sequel. Whereas the first season of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe bombed so bad it was removed from the Netflix top 10 after two days. And season two of this dumpster juice will soon follow because after watching it it's definitely not better. It's just as bad. However, fear not. Join us for season three where Tila Zilla gets the Abby Zilla treatment and gets the operation she so desperately wants and finally becomes the hero. I think Netflix is either trolling the fandom at this point or they have zero self-awareness. It amazes me how Netflix gets good shows like Arcane or Dark Crystal but then have something completely on the opposite side of the 
spectrum like Tila Zilla and the Masters of the Universe. And after going through the eye cancer of watching the show, I need to ask this very important question. Is Oprah Winfrey writing the show? Because they're giving the power sword to everyone. You get the power sword. You get the power sword. We all get the power sword. I can't believe I need to say this, but it's gotten to the point where I have to teach these morons who make millions of dollars how to write. If you give everyone the sword, then nobody wills the sword because then it loses its charm. There's a great quote from the Incredibles movie that fits this show perfectly. When everyone is super, no one will be. Perfect. Someone send that to Kevin Smith's wife's boyfriend. Thank you. Anyway, can we universally agree that Robot Chicken's adaptation of He-Man is the best modern version? Change my mind. Anyway, I will say this. I was wrong about one detail. Tila Zilla did end up becoming the sorceress, but Andra became the new man at arms. And believe it or not, Adam the Twink is still He-Man. However, Skella God was so much of an incel that he immediately depowered for a chance to bone evil Lynn. I was laughing my ass off periodically during this. Skeletor somehow got honey potted. And what was the reason you ask? Nobody knows. These big red nosed clowns just didn't know what to do with Skeletor. And the script and the director can't decide who is the main antagonist. But the moral of the story, ladies and gents, is never, ever trust a 50 year old man who dresses like a teenager with his baseball cap backwards and cries at the drop of a hat to know how to turn an 80s property more metal. That is not happening. This entire series is just like Kevin Smith, emotionally unstable. Let's all remember the fact that his exact words were, I swear on my daughter's life that there will be more He-Man in this part than you ever wanted before. You will literally say there's too much He-Man. This fella swore on his daughter's life and lied. It doesn't get more pathetic. Thick. Look, I expected nothing from this second part and I'm still disappointed. The only 80s cartoon that was remade and I enjoyed was the Thundercats. And unfortunately, it's a real shame they only lasted four seasons. And now that I think about it, the best He-Man we've ever got was the Thundercats versus Masters of the Universe. And its sequel, Injustice versus Masters of the Universe. Yes, they are comics, but they are still some of the best he-Man iterations I've seen since 2002 and on that bombshell, Mannix is out.